if civil war comes, and I do think it is imminent, you're quite right, it will for us be the price of freedom. Our people here have for a long time been prepared for this eventuality. Um, I first know of the war when we were sent back from the college where we were studying back to mm -hmm. our home. My college was a, a bit far, mm -hmm. about um, 140 miles from my home. The then name was State, but now Abia State. Oh, now Ebony State of Nigeria. How much of an explanation did they give you when they sent everyone here? Well, because everybody was afraid. They, nobody knows the extent the war will reach. And being in the state capital, everybody feel that our college will be used as a base. So how did, how did you feel about it? What was your reaction going back? Well, no, everybody was frustrated because it's my first year in this school. As you could imagine your first year reaching the college and you were saying, go back. I wasn't happy. We came back to our home and started life. You have two important stations that you can gather, uh, gather news. One from the federal a capital, Lagos, and the second is Enugu, which is our capital in eastern Nigeria. When the war really started, we are hearing about the, uh, the advancement of the Biafra from the Biafra region to other parts of Nigeria hearing about the advancement of the federal troops, the federal troops to eastern Nigeria, mm. which was amazing. Wherever you are, you have to be afraid because you don't know which town, which uh, villages will be falling to the federal troops. Well, Biafra was proving vigilance in everything at the beginning. Everybody, nobody's heart is shaking that house is entering to Eastern Nigeria. Mm. So you, you were confident that? We were, con everybody was confident. We were all saying, uh, let's go and fight the war. Those who have not in, in, enlisted in the war, as a soldiers were hurrying to go and register if they will be accepted. So you can go to the to any good form enlistment and you'll be disappointed though it may be because of your heart, because of your uh, age, you are not accepted, then you come home and join the home buff. What was that? Home buff was those who are fighting local, who are waging the war locally, that is staying in the village. So should they enter unknowingly, then they will continue the fight. Well, when I could not join them, mm. I was doing a petty trading, going to buy fish, going to buy other things, come to sell in the market. Not the African soldiers, the not Biafran Nigerian. Mm. Those uh, village soldiers, they will come and they say, well, I want, we want to buy this, we want to buy that. They carry them. And no money. You, and they, if they, you are fortunate, they give you some 
balance. Mm. If you are not fortunate, that, you, that is your sacrifice. Like your contribution to the yeah. war effort. Yes. They came and collected my thing and told them, you rubbish soldiers. All this you are carrying, you are going to go and they consume it. So, in the night they come and they arrested me, take me to the they are camp, naked me, beat me, beat me, beat me, rubbish me. I was crying for four good days. So they, they released me mm -hmm. and I have to come, go back home. They kept you for four days? And these were kind of people that you'd grown up with, people that you knew? Yes, I knew. They were my schoolmates. They were younger. They are asked to remain at the back of at the villages. It is becoming impossible for Biafra to get necessary things they need, like the food stuff, the material they use, the clothes, what they, I mean, all the necessary things they need, need in health, for health, were no way to be found. Especially those who are living at the big cities. Like Enugu, Onitsha, Abakliki, Owere, all those big cities. Mm -hmm. They are being, um, people in eastern Nigeria are pushed out of those cities. Back to the villages. Back to the villages. Towards the end of the war. Mm -hmm. Outside of Nigerian troops were advancing. Yes. They passed through a person to the government federal, federal government college. Passed going to Ubru, to Sili, Onitia, mm. but they didn't go as far to their villages. What was the toll of war on your family? Um, my family was badly affected. We lost. My elder brother, who joined Biafra, went to the war and he couldn't come home even for wars. Then we couldn't hear from him for a long time throughout the war. They came and informed the family that he had been killed. And that was a big blow because he is the... The only one who only had an education. Education. So why do you think um, that he decided to go and join the army at that well, point? Well, he like... was into, into enthusiastic of going to the war. Did you want to go to the, join the army? Well, if I'm allowed, I could have. Why weren't you allowed? Well, when I was younger. Yeah. And since the teacher had gone and couldn't come back, nobody was ready to allow me to go to war. Yeah, I was about to enter school. Yeah. The family was mourning. But they were pushing. There was a time they started pushing for me to join the Biafran army. We really? were conscripted. 
So we need to address them. They were advanced, the, black, the Nigerian soldiers were advancing to us. We were <coughs> moving to them in the um, stage why they were shooting at a distance, the soldiers, Nigerian soldiers were shooting. And we were still a bit further from them. So we, they dispatched us, asked us anybody who knows where to go, how to run away, how to go back to where we, we are coming from, should go. Mm -hmm. So, Luckily, that's the way we escape entering Bia France. Um, mm -hmm. yeah? You never told me that part. Well, what could you have learned from it? <laughs> Because we thought that we might have uh, win the war. But we lost the war. We lost persons like my brother. Mm. And we angrily accepted that the war has ended. And we come back to join the country by going back to school and starting life again. Yeah, you have to adjust to that's still your things. So it was still tough with yes, regards to food to, and resources? You have to suffer hunger a bit. You have to suffer lack of materials like uh, boots, clothes and every other thing. So things were tough. But everyone were feeling the same. Both big and small. And they just give, give everybody 20 pounds. If you have money, which you bank, you get 20, you get 20 pounds. No Regardless matter, of... No yeah. matter the amount of money you bank, even if you bank 20,000, it's affected us badly. You can't buy many things with 20 pounds. It levels everyone, whether big or small, you start with 20 pounds. Mm -hmm. So everybody started running helter skelter how to get money. So how do you feel when you see the current Biafra movement? They are just reminding the young people about what Biafra suffered how we could go back to Biafra is what I don't know. Whether it's conducive to us, whether we should agree that it will benefit us or not. Remaining Nigeria, the suffering we are heading to, let it not reach the stage we suffered during Biafra. It was the worst suffering every Nigeria has ever. Those who saw what Biafra is will not like to put their legs back to it because it's a devastating state. Mm -hmm. The purpose of today's video, I guess, was just to share the types of stories and discussions surrounding Biafra that I've grown up with, but I can imagine a lot of Nigerians and a lot of other people haven't necessarily shared in
Yeah, you're sleeping. No, no rest on my head. Yeah, you do rest on my head. <laughs> <laughs>